Here's how I got Proxmox version 8 installed by installing version 7 first. Here we are again talking about servers. Proxmox version 8 is out now. There's a couple of differences between version 7 and version 8. I'm not going to get into that here. I chose Proxmox as my primary hypervisor for my Ryzen server and went to install Proxmox version 8, newest, latest, greatest. I ran into a few issues trying to install version 8 direct, but I got a workaround. So let's just dive into that. As always, there will be timestamps in the description as well as along the timeline if you want to jump ahead to any specific points because I'm probably going to ramble for a while. As usual, you're going to need a couple of things for this. You're going to need an install medium, in our case, USB drive. And of course, you're going to need your media, your ISO file. Quick review with Dr. Google will bring you to the Proxmox site and we're going to go to virtualization and download. Or you could just, I guess, go directly to downloads. Proxmox VE or virtual environment is what we're looking at. ISO images, this is where you get your ISOs. I use Bolina Etcher to mount the ISO to the flash drive. I've used Rufus in the past and had mixed results with this specific OS, but you can use whatever works best for you. Flash from file, we'll find our version eight, which is what we just downloaded. We'll select our USB target, hit flash, hit yes on the screen, the prompt that pops up, and there it goes. So while it's doing that, now we're gonna power up our Ryzen server. For this one, we'll hit F11 till we get to our boot menu as it's powering up, and we'll select our USB device. Boom, you're ready to install Proxmox, right? So I thought everything was all gravy. This is just gonna go smooth as can be. I'll just install Proxmox. I'll start creating content around containers, VMs, managing Proxmox, setting up Proxmox networking, things like that, but no. So we go to install Proxmox VE graphical. And here's where it gets stuck. Checked with Dr. Google, of course, and consulted with Professor YouTube. Anyway, I went down this rabbit hole trying to install version eight directly onto the server. This is where I got stuck. I couldn't even get it to install. So what was my magic workaround? Version seven of course. So there is a direct upgrade path from 7 to 8, 7.4 specifically to version 8. I don't like doing in-place upgrades. Historically, it leaves a ghost in the machine kind of thing. Remnants of the previous operating system are still left on the current operating system. It just, it tends to be a pain in the ass. That being said, this is a brand new install. Doing an in-place upgrade or direct upgrade from 7.4 to 8, in this case, I don't think is as large of an issue as it would be if you were running 7.4 in production or for a long time and you've already got VMs and containers and you're already managing it on a day-to-day -day basis, it could cause hiccups along the way. I don't know. Proxmox is a fairly lightweight OS in the first place, so it may be a non-issue. Anyway, we're back to our Proxmox download screen and now we're going to do the same process but with a version 7.4 on the same or a different USB drive. So of course, same process, 7.4. Eventually. Boom. We're here to install Proxmox 7.4. There were a couple of different install options with version 8. 7.4 is the only real option we have. We could go down to advanced, but we just hit install and we wait. First screen that pops up is your EULA. Of course, you definitely want to read that and agree to the T's and C's if you agree. Then you can go down and select which target to install the OS on, uh, where your country is at, and your time zone, your super secret password, and an email address. Now you're gonna name your, your host name. FQDN is a fully qualified domain name. So whatever you want your domain name to be, we'll just name it frosty.home. Here is where you can change your uh, main IP address for your Proxmox server. So we've got our IP address, our gateway, our DNS. If you've got a DNS server, here's where you'll put that in. If you have a DNS server, you're probably not watching this. And install. This is gonna take a little while. Go get yourself a cup of coffee and relax. Later. All right, you can see we are getting close. 95%, come on, baby. All right, reboot. Uh. You can see at initial boot up, you've got a couple of options there. It automatically picks Proxmox VE for the virtual environment, goes through the post process, boots up to where you're able to log in and get everything going. You'll come up to this screen and it gives you your IP address that you assign to the host. 
uh, when you went to set it up. Uh, and then it also gives you a port number to access. Jumping back over here to our primary just web browser here, and you'll probably get this error as well. Just hit proceed. Main username when you first start up is gonna be root. And then the super secure password that you set up. Here we are, we're into Proxmox. Looks familiar, right? Now, if we come to our node and then summary, we can see that we're on Proxmox 7.4. Dash three, but we want to be on Proxmox eight. So you can go through and put each of these shell, shell commands in directly, or I'll leave a link down in the description for this. There is a script that will do all of this for you, makes it a lot quicker and simpler, and just pushes the update on through, essentially. So first things first is, if you don't have at a minimum of five gigs available for this, go free up some space, or go, go buy some more space or install some additional storage. To check this, uh, we're gonna type df-h, and we're gonna look at this here, pve-root, directory and you can see available i've got 87 gigs plenty of storage here next up you will want to check that you're running the most current version we'll come back here to shell the script installer is going to go ahead and upgrade to your most recent version there's that bash command and hit yes you'll go through and read all of these or essentially hit yes to all of the questions that they ask you and then you can update ve now yeah do be patient this can take a little while. Two hours later. And here we are. Now we're going to reboot the host. Our server has booted back up. Oh, look at that. So the most recent 7.4 version is dash 15. Uh, where do we go from here? Go back into shell and we're going to type PVE 728 dash dash full. This is going to run a script that checks a couple of things and tells you if it immediately sees an issue. It's not gonna fix those issues, but it'll tell you if there's an issue that the application feels your host is not ready to upgrade from seven to eight. You can see it's gone through and checked 28 total things, 23 of which have passed and five were skipped. No warnings, no issues, no errors here. We're good to go and keep moving forward. Paste our bash command, there we are. Start the upgrade to Proxmox. Uh, VE8, yes, gonna answer a couple of questions. Yes, 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 and off it goes. One million zillion jillion dillion cotillion times later. Okay, that took um, about 10 minutes, a little less than 10 minutes on my system, but when it's all said and done, you're gonna come up to a screen that asks you if you want to reboot now, hit yes, and it's gonna reboot your host. All right, and after a couple of minutes, we can see that our server is back online. So under our summary, we're now running the newest, latest, greatest of 8.0.3. And that's it. Now we're ready to start really getting into this and playing with virtual machines. And what I'm most excited with is LXC containers or Linux containers. If you learned anything today, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. It really helps out the channel. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to learn more about Proxmox and follow me in my adventures going down this rabbit hole with new virtual machines and new containers for our environment. And of course, thanks for watching.